Okay, I transferred that file over. This is the uh, shop computer. This is the computer that's hooked up to the uh, the mill via that uh, USB cord right there. And uh, this is my WinDNC software. Talks to the control in the mill. So this is the file that we just created. I had to renumber it to a number. Uh, the control only likes uh, these numbers right here. So uh, I had to renumber it. And uh, now I've got it highlighted and this little uh, lightning bolt icon here will send that to the mill. And it is sent. Now we'll go over there. All right, back at the control. In escape, pulling up my program menu. And uh, we're looking for 246.1. It's right there. And uh, here's the G code just coming down. And what I'm going to do is make one modification right here. It's set to go to Z down to minus 1.02, which is the 20 below the bottom, 20,000 below the bottom. I'm going to change that temporarily. And. Uh, I want it to just go down to 0 0.02 above the part and uh, that's so that we can uh, trace it out and just uh, compare it to the witness line and make sure that the first tool is cutting like uh, where I expect it to. So I'm going to drop that in the program replace and now you can see it's replaced it with a uh, 0 0.02. Uh, you know what, i got to pop the tool in quick. I didn't put the tool in so I'll do that and then I'll uh, bring it back. Okay, I've... Uh move the put the tool in and now I'm just going to do a quick uh, touch off I just want to show you a way that I do the touch off it's quick and dirty um, you machinists are probably uh, a true machinist I'm sure you've heard of fake news well I'm a fake machinist uh, but what I'm doing is I'm just uh, using the uh, knee mill hand crank or the the knee crank and I'm just bringing this up slowly until it touches and I'm just getting a score right now and there so I just set the Z with it that way. It's quick and dirty and uh, gets the job done. But uh, now I've got the uh, Z set for zero. And I've already preset it to zero in the mill, in the control. So now what I'm going to do is give it a uh, bump for the Z up and just climb the Z back up to about an inch or something in that area. So now when uh, the program comes around tells the Z to go down to 20 thousandths it should be 20 thousandths above the part and then we can just walk it around I don't have the three phase power on right now I'm just using the mill with 110 um, I don't know maybe a lot of people don't know it but uh, generally all you ever need three phase power for in any of these mills is a spindle the spindle is pretty much uh, the thing that's three phase power uh, the control and all the servos are on off of 110. You can just plug, run it off a of wall power essentially um, Got to have a good size connector for it, but you can essentially run it off a of wall power, but uh, Anyway, um, so to do this I don't have to have the uh, rotary phase converter on all that sort of stuff uh, Right now I'm gonna bump the speed up here and I'm gonna move the uh, X back Off of the part so when this thing starts coming down I don't ever like my Z to come down on top of the part. I'd rather it come down to the side. It'll give me time to uh, hit the feed hole button in case something happens that I don't like. All right, uh, one more look at the program. Make sure that uh, it's doing what I'm expecting it to do. I'm on the right program. It's profile rough 062. Hit the enter. That enters that program in the uh, control. Make sure that I'm running that program. And. Uh, now I'm going to hit the green button and we'll watch what happens and uh, I'm going to have my finger on the feed hole button to see if anything goes wrong. So right now it's moving over, now it should come down slowly and it should be set so that it's not going to touch the part and it is just clearing the part by 20 thousandths which is what we set there and then from this view you can see uh, we're checking against the witness line there and it is going to chew off material pretty much right to the witness line where we marked it with the marker so we're gonna it looks like so far we've got this thing set up correctly I'm gonna speed the feed rate up now so we get around it more quickly but uh, I'm just gonna 
run this thing around the whole part and uh, it should go on a vent flow all the rest of the way and once it's done I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm back, that's done. Uh, I turned the three phase power on, turned the mill on, got everything lined up and I'm ready to run this part. I also went in here and I adjusted the uh, feed depth for the Z back to 1.02, so that's an inch and 20 thousandths down below the top of the part. I've got to replace that, so now it is in there. One more look to make sure that we're where we want to be. Oops. And uh, it did definitely change the code back down to Z minus 1.0, so we are ready to push the button and uh, make some chips. Here we go. Oh, before I do that, I want to tell you, there was one place where the profile didn't, uh, it's looking pretty pretty thin, is right here on the tip of this thing. I might end up not getting full contact right here. It didn't, it didn't with this end mill. When it moves in 60 thousandths and then another 15 thousandths, that's 75-ish uh, thousandths, 77. I'm hoping that it'll make contact by then. But uh, right now, this end mill will clear it. And, uh, but I'm hoping that uh, as I move in closer and closer to the profile work our way in, we're going to get there because it is cut a little bit oversized, but that tip is going to be really close. If it doesn't, and, and it doesn't with the tools that make the final passes and the finish pass, um, what I'll do is I'll have my welder guy just throw some uh, aluminum weld on there, and then I'll just uh, form it over with a file and, uh, and do some hand work on it. Not, uh, not a big deal. So, all right, let's push the button. And uh, oh, before I do, I've got to put some uh, WD-40 on it. Give it a little lubricant for the aluminum. I don't use a coolant system and like a. I, I need to get a mister system, but uh, I don't use the flood coolant. It just uh, makes a mess. I just use uh, for the aluminum WD-40 and a little bit of air. But uh, for the first few seconds, we can run this and uh, show you what's going on. So, I'm ready, away we go. I like to turn the feed rates down pretty low because uh, that way I can hit the feed hole if something crazy happens. But I don't think it will in this case. Now I'm going to turn it down about two inches a minute, three inches a minute. And it's taken off about a 30 thousandths maybe on that pass right there. Now I've got to hit the uh, end mill with some air. I'll bring you back when this profile cut is done. Coming up on the halfway point here, I wanted you guys to see this. Uh, you'll hear where it starts not making contact. Um, it's starting to trim less off on this uh, 60,000 foot pad. It's making a nice cut though. And you'll see here when it hits the flat spot on the tip. It's going to go from making a very light cut to no cut. It's just barely touching now. And now it's not making any contact whatsoever. And now we'll pick up contact here a little bit again. There it is. I'll bring you back when it's finished cutting on this other side. Okay, we finished that cut. You can see now that the uh, flat spot closed up a little bit more. And uh, that next 40 thousandths that comes off there, when it goes down to 15 thousandths of uh, allowance, um, it's probably going to close it up a little bit more. And I might get lucky. It might make contact all the way around with the uh, final profiling bit but you can see that the profile is uh, coming out really good um, I also turned off the three-phase power so I don't have to listen to rotary phase converter by the way I mentioned that earlier uh, for those of you that are ambitious and you want to try and change your mill over um, it's not um, totally simple uh, the big tricky part is your VFD in your mill this is a little sidebar here but here's the VFD that controls uh, the spindle in mine um, there's a signal that comes off of that to your control um, and the purpose for it is if the uh, spindle uh, VFD, the vari variable frequency drive, has a failure or fault and the table stops moving, um, 
or I'm sorry, the spindle stops moving, you also have to stop the table from moving because you'll side load a tool if you if your spindle stops turning obviously and your table's still moving, that's a bad thing. So there's an interlock in there and you've got a um, in my control, I've got a switch inside the cabinet that I installed that uh, overrides that when I'm in one uh, single phase power. It uh, overrides the, uh, otherwise I can show you what it looks like. It comes up with a, uh, show you my, uh, my little setup here. I've just got a switch that I can turn and you'll hear the uh, spindle turn off and it'll give a uh, flag on the control and say basically you have a spindle fault. You lost your three phase power so you've got to put in a switch to uh, override that if you want to run your mill on 115 power but uh, okay so from here I'm gonna do the same tool but now instead of a 62 thousandths uh, allowance finish allowance I'm gonna go down to 15 thousandths I'll do that program and I'll bring you back okay we're back and I'm about to start the uh, next roughing round same tool um, it's just only gonna leave a 15 thousandths finish pass wall or um, an allowance there's a 15 thousandths allowance for the finish pass finish profile pass so let's get this one started got the machine plugged in again with rotary phase converters on and away we're going <coughs> It'll be interesting to see on this one if we get back to the uh, get this nose closed up here in that flat spot. In the All right, it's starting good. You can see it's taking about a forty thousand cut off of there. Let me get the light on it better so you can see it. Uh, it's going to right, right, right. some air on it, put some more uh, WD on it, and I'll bring it back. Okay, we're coming up on the nose piece here. We're going to see if it makes contact all the way around there. Seems to be doing pretty good. This cutter, uh, really, this aluminum, uh, they really like that aluminum. It just screws it right off of there. I got, uh, let's listen and see if it uh, makes contact all the way around. Yes, it did. Beauty. That's awesome. So now uh, I got full uh, profile all the way around. That'll be great. Um, anyway, what I was saying, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, this cutter. I'm running this thing at 5 inches a minute at 800 RPM. And I don't know if this rougher is made for aluminum, but it really seems to just chew the aluminum off. I'm not taking a hugely deep cut. It's only like a 40 some thousand spot, but it seems to be uh, okay. And I just keep a little air blowing on it, and it uh, keeps the tool cool. And with a little bit of WD on it, it uh, seems to work okay. I'll bring you back when this pass is done. Okay, that pass finished up nicely. Um, as you can see, we had contact around the nose, so the profile is complete. That's, uh, that's good. Um, that means I did my math right, and everything worked out well. Okay, from this point, um, what I did starting out for the very first die or two that I made, uh, my next operation was a profile mill, the full depth all the way around, and I do a finished pass, take 15 thousandths off of there. Well, the last couple of dies I made, I started doing something a little different. Um, but let me go back to the first the dies. The reason that I did it that way was because I wanted a straight wall going down here, and once I did the face cut on the top and then did the round over, um, that got me a line here where the round over bit, you could see where the round over bit was running. And then I started the undercut passes and you'd see the top of the undercut pass on the first pass would be about here, second pass would be about there. And then I need a little bit more, so I brought, uh, brought the tool in just a little bit more until that undercut tool cut met right with the bottom of the round over cut and it gives a nice uh, a nice transition from the round over to the undercut and 
I had to do that by trial and error and just watch where the cutting line on the underpass would come. Now, um, what I've been doing lately is I'm gonna go right to the first undercut pass and what it'll do is it'll cut uh, under here, it'll undercut this to about here and then I'll run the second one and it'll come to about there. Um, and the reason I do that is it just gets rid of the material so that when I do the profile cut I'm really only cutting a little bit of material right in here and uh, I got to do the undercut cut anyway so why not just uh, do uh, kill two birds one stone and then the finished profile cut and in fact it's getting to the point where I'm thinking I can get rid of the finished profile cut altogether because when I run the roundover tool um, the, the undercut pass is meeting where the roundover tool lets off and I almost may not even need a finished profile cut but for now I'm still going to do it I'll run you through it and show it to you so um, the next tool I'm going to put in is the, uh, the undercut tool and we're going to take the uh, first two passes with that and I'll show you how the uh, die starts sizing up after that be right back Okay, there's the undercut tool. I got it in and I touched it off to the top of the uh, die there. So here we go with the undercut tool on the first pass. I always watch this closely to make sure that it's not going to dive into the steel because this tool I wanted to just cut aluminum and never cut any steel because then It'll stay nice and sharp. Now it's removing a little triangle of material there. The chips come off as little ribbons. And it takes a pretty big chunk on this first cut, but it, uh, I'm running it at 800 RPM and about two inches a minute. And it gives me about a two and a half thousandths chip load on that, uh, on that two. Do a little squirt. I've been cutting a lot of dies with it at this speed and feed, and it seems to be good. But I gotta put a little air on it and uh, keep it clear. I'll bring you back. Coming around the uh, first half here, you'll be able to get a better view of the uh, stuff that it makes. Right now it's trimming off part of that spacer down there, so it's making a little bit of a weird noise because it's, uh, it's, it's trimming off part of that uh, 40,000 spacer on the bottom, so it adds a little bit of noise to the front of it. So, uh, see here quickly just walk around and uh, walk around the nose. Because I'm not doing that profile cut, it's actually taking a pretty healthy cut on this one. I'm going to have to adjust this if I keep doing this process. I'm going to have to adjust this to uh, make the tool a little bit bigger so that the cam software stands it off a little bit more and takes a little bit less to the cut on this first pass. And I'll get uh, the tool up as far as you want. I'll bring it back when this is done. From this angle now, you can see what I was talking about. Now you can see where the uh, line for the undercut locks up from the bottom up and you can see where this cut goes. The next one will be about another, uh, eh, it winds up about another 60,000 on the next cut. Okay, undercut pass one is done. And uh, I pretty much showed you before, but you get an idea from this, I guess, of what it's actually doing. But it's, you know, it's cutting the, uh, cutting the wall down on the underside. And uh, I'm all set to start pass two. I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, we're coming around the nose on an undercut pass two here. Once this gets past the uh, nose, you should be able to get a good view of the uh, before and after on the second cut as we'll see on the side of the tool. The difference between the height of the cut. You can see the height of the cut on this side here is not there. Come over here and look, and you can see that the height of the cut is right here on this side. That's just the fact 
that the, I'm telling the cam stopper that the tool is smaller, so it moves the tool pad closer to the die to cut a little bit closer. But now you can start to see the undercut profile that I'm going for on the nose where you can see, and it gives about a 10 degree undercut. More in a minute. I didn't get crazy blown away the uh, chips, so you can see the pile of chips that's left by that cutter. The cutter cuts really nice, and it makes just these little curly chips. It just peels this aluminum right off the side of it, but it uh, gives a great finish. It's a great cutter. Nice, smooth finish on it. Here you can see the, uh, the vertical part of the uh, profile cuts from the rough cutter are still there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to take and face off the top, and the last undercut pass is really dependent upon the top of this material so what I've got to do is get the top of the material set because I've got my uh, in order to give me the right thickness here on that last cut this has to be at the finished height so um, actually what I'm gonna do right now is uh, pop in the last profile cut and then go around this quick and what you'll see is it'll make the uh, it'll make this flat area just a little bit wider again and then on the last uh, undercut pass it'll We'll shrink that up to match the uh, the roundover. So what we're going to do is last profile cut, then a face cut, then a roundover cut, and then the last undercut, and that's uh, where we're headed from here. 